Physicists like to understand everything about the physical universe. And we've come up with a pretty good theory that does a pretty good job. This theory is called the standard model. Using a handful of particles of matter and a few forces, we can explain an awful lot of what we see as we study matter and energy, space and time. However, the standard model is not complete. There are questions it doesn't answer, and so we continue to try and find better theories that explain even more. An idea that is often tried is one that we call supersymmetry, and I'm going to tell you what supersymmetry is all about. In a single sentence, a supersymmetric theory is one in which the equations for force and the equations for matter are identical. Well, you might wonder why this is a good idea. It turns out that if the world has this property, you can explain many mysteries. Before we talk explicitly about supersymmetry, I need to clear up a common misconception. Supersymmetry is not a theory. It is a principle that a theory might have. As I said, supersymmetry treats forces and matter on equal footing, and any theory with that property is said to be supersymmetric. Let me emphasize that point. There are dozens of supersymmetric theories, and they're all somewhat different. This is a little subtle, so let me use the idea of the principle of charity as an analogy. There are many ways to be charitable. An example of three different kinds of charity might be the approach where one works directly with the poor, or a rich philanthropist, or even my buddy Eddie's latest scam. If we found that one was ineffective, or even all of them, we wouldn't have ruled out the idea of charity, just a specific approach. Similarly, even if scientists rule out a particular supersymmetric theory, it might be that some other theory that treats matter and forces on equal footing is right. Disproving specific supersymmetric, supersymmetric theories is possible, but to rule out the general principle of supersymmetry itself is actually quite difficult. So let's take a look at how supersymmetry shows up in physics. We'll start with the idea of symmetry. Symmetry has a common meaning, which can be illustrated by this sphere. Take a look at it as I rotate it around in every direction. No matter how much I twist it, the sphere looks the same. Symmetry means that if I make a change, the final result is the same. In physics, we think in terms of mathematical equations. Let's take a look at a simple example. We see here the equation of 3 plus 4, which we all know equals 7. If we swap the order of the 3 and the 4 and have 4 plus 3, it still equals 7 we can say that addition is symmetric under swapping the order. Swap the order and get the same answer. That's a form of symmetry. In particle physics, we use much more complicated equations. So let's take a look at the standard model equation shown here. This equation governs the behavior of particles called fermions and bosons. <laughs> okay, I was just kidding. That's too complicated. We can understand supersymmetry using only the important features of the standard model equation. The basic equation is shown here. It has a term for matter and a term for forces, and each of them is a different color. If we swap matter and forces, but not the colors, we see that the new equation doesn't look like the old one. This equation is not symmetric under the swapping of force and matter. So let's see how to make the equation supersymmetric. I'll start by tossing out some building blocks. Now, excuse me for a moment while I make the equation supersymmetric. You see that I've added some terms to the equation, specifically a new matter and a new force term. Let's see what happens when we swap the matter and forces. In this case, when we make the swap, we see that the new equation is the same as the original one. This is the essence of supersymmetry. A supersymmetric theory is one that treats matter and forces identically. This is the most important takeaway message. So is all this just mathematical hocus pocus? Well, maybe. We don't actually know if these new and expanded equations, which are unchanged if we swap the matter and force carrying terms, actually describe the universe. They may not. But what if they do? Why is it that physicists are so interested in this idea of supersymmetry? It's because equations that contain supersymmetry can explain some of the mysteries left by the standard model, like explaining why gravity is so much weaker than the other forces, why the Higgs boson exists, and even provides a possible source of the dark matter that seems to govern mysteries and how galaxies rotate, just to name a few. I describe these benefits in another video. So how will we know if supersymmetry is actually seen in the universe? Well, supersymmetric theories predict a cousin particle for every particle we've ever observed. These cousin particles 
have never been observed, which is a good reason to be skeptical of the idea of supersymmetry. Still, the idea is attractive enough to have generated over 10,000 scientific papers and the attention of thousands of physicists. The search for these cousin particles is a hot research topic, and we scientists anxiously await the outcome of these studies. The next couple of years will be very exciting.